Hey guys, Michelle Glass here. We have our fifth episode of our chapter 16 lecture series. You'll love this one. It's super, super short, kind of like those preganglionic neurons in the sympathetic division. Okay, so our topic for this presentation is first dual innervation. And we have alluded to this. We've talked about the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division as being opposites of each other. So if they're opposites of each other, then you know if we see the sympathetic division is increasing heart rate, then the parasympathetic division would decrease the heart rate. And if they're both controlling the heart rate, they have to in some way be controlling um, that cardiac muscle, meaning the cardiac muscle has to be controlled by both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic division. So dual innervation is just as simple as that. So innervation is talking about the nerves penetrating and controlling the tissue. We have lots of tissues that are being controlled or innervated by both sympathetic and parasympathetic division. So that means we can turn it up, turn it down, turn it on, turn it off. And so this is how we can control and maintain that homeostatic balance in our organ systems. Now a lot of our tissues are duly innervated, but not all. If they are not duly innervated, that's where we're gonna see this discussion of autonomic tone being so important. Now, not, excuse me, autonomic tone is going to be widespread throughout the entire autonomic nervous system. So anything that's being innervated um, by the autonomic nervous system will have autonomic tone. Tone here is the same as when we talked about muscle tone in our discussion of skeletal muscle and AMP2, um, AMP1. Tone is just talking about that background level of stimulation. So you're always going to have those nerves releasing a little bit of neurotransmitters so that you're getting a little bit of stimulation of that tissue. That's important for the overall functioning of the nervous system. That's important for those tissues um, to be healthy, right? But we'll see autonomic tone involved in really kind of the regulation of those tissues that are not duly innervated. So if you are only being innervated by the sympathetic nervous system, you still need a way of turning it on, turning it off, and kind of making adjustments in between. So I like to think about on a, excuse me, autonomic tone as providing sort of that dimmer switch so it allows you to kind of raise it up a notch a little bit more a little bit more really amp it up or kind of bring it down in the reverse direction right okay so our greatest example here is our smooth muscle of our blood vessels so you have smooth muscle in the walls of your arteries and your arterioles you know and to some extent in your veins as well and this smooth muscle in your blood vessels is only innervated by the sympathetic nervous system. And what we see then is the sym sympathetic nervous system, um, the autonomic tone is to keep some constriction of those blood vessels all the time. So they're always a little bit stimulated to be a little bit constricted, right? And so this is great because then we can you know, amp up the signal and we can constrict that blood vessel even more or we can stop sending the signal and allow that tissue to relax, which is gonna allow dilation of our blood vessel. It's gonna allow our blood vessel to get a larger diameter. So this is gonna be important if you have high blood pressure. One of the easiest things to do to reduce your blood pressure is to make the opening in the um, blood vessel bigger so that there's not as much pressure as that same volume of blood is trying to move through. So one easy way to do that is to um, stop sending the signal. Now the only way stopping the signal can really allow us to have kind of this um, range and very constricted to very dilated as if you have the autonomic tone which is allowing for a little bit of stimulation all the time uh, to that type of tissue. And so again we'll see autonomic tone involved um, you know widespread throughout the autonomic nervous system but we'll see it especially being important when we have tissue that is not duly innervated and the smooth muscle of our blood vessels is only being controlled by the sympathetic division and so it's a great example. And that's it.